dear students today we are going to discuss about meaning of arithmetic mean and its mathematical properties through sugan economics <music> students in the previous classes we have discussed about meaning and characteristics of measures of central tendency and functions of an average so today we are going to discuss about the kinds of averages that too we are going to discuss about the meaning of arithmetic mean and the properties of arithmetic mean so here under kinds of averages there are five kinds of averages arithmetic mean median mode geometric mean and harmonic mean these are all the five kinds of averages or measures of central tendency so here the averages are classified into two things one is mathematical averages another one is positional averages mathematical and positional averages here you take into account of the green that is median and mode are called positional averages median and mode are called positional averages why median and mode are called positional averages means here median and mode are calculated either with the help of statistical formula or with the help of a graph so because of that only we are telling um, median and mode are called positional averages and that too it explains the positional values and here you take note of arithmetic mean geometric mean and harmonic mean here these three averages are called mathematical averages because these three averages are calculated only with the help of statistical formula it's not possible for us to calculate these three averages with the help of graphs or diagram are you clear so there are five kinds of averages arithmetic mean median mode geometric mean and harmonic mean out of these five two that is median and mode are called positional averages and arithmetic mean geometric mean and harmonic mean are called mathematical averages so now here we are going to discuss about arithmetic mean and its properties so first you take what do you mean by arithmetic mean right so here arithmetic mean is otherwise called mean simply you can tell mean so here the mean is denoted by the symbol x bar x bar is the symbol which is used to denote mean or arithmetic mean so here how we can calculate arithmetic mean or what do you mean by arithmetic mean it is obtained by dividing the total value of the various items by their number so here how we are calculating arithmetic mean means simply how many values are given in a series we are taking the total of the values or total of the given values and the total should be divided by number of values in the series so that is it is obtained by dividing the total value suppose here in our sum suppose in the x there are 10 values are having we are having 10 values so n equal to 10 and the total of 10 is equal to suppose 200 suppose it is equal to 200 so how we are obtaining arithmetic mean means this 200 should be divided by 10 that is equal to 20 so 20 is called the arithmetic mean value so here arithmetic mean is obtained by dividing the total value of various items by their number are you clear okay so now i will explain about the mathematical properties of arithmetic mean so here i had given some five mathematical properties of arithmetic mean number 1 here the sum of the deviations taken from arithmetic mean is always equal to zero so this is the first and foremost mathematical properties of arithmetic mean the sum of you take another sigma sigma is nothing but sum so sum of the deviations taken from arithmetic mean so here x values are we are having x values and we calculate the arithmetic mean value for the given x series and you take the deviation with the help of that arithmetic mean value and now you take the sum that sum is equal to zero so now i will explain these things with the help of an example so here here under x value we are having some five values so the total of x is equal to 300 and here n is equal to 5 
So now you can identify or you can calculate x bar value. So x bar value is nothing but sigma x by n. So here the sigma x is equal to 300 and the n is equal to 5. So your x bar value is equal to 60. Right? So now what I am telling is now we have to take the deviation with the help of x bar. So here x small x. x minus x bar. So x minus 60. Now you take a deviation, the deviation values are minus 20, minus 30, 0, 10, 40. Now you can take the sum total. So here you can take the uh, negative value separately and positive value separately. Here the negative value total is exactly equal to the positive value total. So here the sum is equal to that is sigma small x is equal to 0. Sigma small x is equal to 0. That is the first mathematical properties. That is sum of the deviations taken from arithmetic mean is always equal to 0. Okay. Now the second one. Here in the second one, the sum of the squares of the deviations taken from arithmetic mean is always minimum. Sum of the squares of the deviation. So here you take x minus x bar. That is the deviation value. Here you take power 2. That is you are taking the square of the deviation value taken from a x bar. And the total you can take. So that is sigma x minus x bar square. So that is equal to minimum. That is always minimum. So here you take the same example. Right. So here in the previous one. In the previous one that is the sum total of the deviation taken from arithmetic mean is always equal to 0. So now you can compare. Suppose instead of taking the deviation with the help of arithmetic mean value. If you take deviation with the help of any other value. Suppose here you take the deviation with the help of 70. That is 70 is not the arithmetic mean value. The arithmetic mean value is equal to 60. So if you are taking the deviation with the help of 70, here you take the deviation, the deviation values are minus 30, minus 40, 10, 0, 30. Now you can take a, a positive value separately and the negative value total separately. So okay, the difference is equal to minus 50. Now we can compare the deviation total with the help of arithmetic mean and the deviation total with the help of assumed mean. So here the deviation which we have taken with the help of arithmetic mean is equal to 0. But you take any other value apart from arithmetic mean value. The deviation value is not comes under 0. It should be greater than 0. Either it may be a positive or negative value. Okay. So here now what we are doing is. Now we are taking, we are taking the square of x value. That is x square. So here 20 square 400. 30 square 900. 0 0. 10 square 100 and 40 square 1600. Now you can take the total of the x square value. So this is equal to uh, 3000. And at the same time you can take the square of the division value which we have calculated with the help of 70. It's not a arithmetic mean value. So here the division values are 30, 40, 10, 0, uh, 30. Now you can take the square. So 30 square that is equal to 900. 40 square 1600. 10 square 100. 0 0. Uh, 30 square 900. Now we can take the total. This d square total is equal to 3500. Now we can compare x square total and d square total. The x square total is minimum. So that is the second property. So the sum of the deviations taken from arithmetic mean. Sum of the deviation taken from arithmetic mean is always equal to 0. Sum of the squares of the deviations taken from arithmetic mean is always minimum. Okay. Are you clear? Okay, now we will discuss about the third property. So here, here we are having the three values, x bar, sigma x and n. Among the three values, if any two values are given, if any two values are given, it is easy for us to calculate the third value. Suppose sigma x and n value is given, you can calculate x bar. For how you can calculate x bar? x bar equal to sigma x by n. Suppose sigma x and x bar is given, you are asked to calculate n. So now how you can calculate n? n equal to sigma x by x bar. Suppose you are given x, uh, x bar and n value and you are asked to calculate sigma x value. So now what we have to do means we have to multiply n with x bar that is equal to sigma x. So here among the three values if any two values are given the third value will be calculated easily that is the third mathematical property of arithmetic mean. Then the fourth one, so here it is easy for us to calculate the combined arithmetic mean for two or more than two groups. So here if we are given the arithmetic mean that is x bar and the n value for 
any two group or more than two groups it is easy for us to calculate the combined arithmetic mean for example you take suppose two groups so how you can calculate that two that is here x bar 1 n1 x bar 2 n2 so here the information about the two groups this is group 1 and this is group 2 is given it is easy for us to calculate the combined arithmetic mean for these two groups so the formula is x bar 1 comma 2 equal to n1 x bar 1 plus n2 x bar 2 divided by n1 plus n2 so this is for the for two groups if it is for three groups you can add one more things that is here you can add n2 x bar sorry n3 x bar 3 divided by n1 plus n2 plus n3 so it is possible for us to calculate the combined arithmetic mean for any number of group if the informations are given for each and every group these two informations are you clear so it is easy for us to calculate the combined arithmetic mean if the x bar and n for n value for different groups are given so that is a fourth mathematical property and the last and the fifth mathematical property is a constant is added or subtracted a constant it added or subtracted in a given series and you can calculate the mean value if you are added a constant value in the given series the arithmetic mean is also increased by the constant value if you are subtracted a constant value in a given series and you are calculating the arithmetic mean here the arithmetic mean value is reduced by the constant value so these are the five points you take it for the mathematical properties of arithmetic mean i can remember one thing so here the first one the sum of the deviations taken from arithmetic mean is always equal to zero and the second property sum of the deviations take sum of the squares of the deviation taken from arithmetic mean is always minimum and if any three among the three values if any two values are given it is easy for us to calculate the third value and it is possible for us to calculate the combined arithmetic mean for two or more than two groups and if a constant is added or subtracted the mean value is also either increased or decreased by the constant value so these are the points to take it for the mathematical properties of arithmetic mean dear students kindly go through the video carefully and understand uh, what is mathematical averages what is positional average what are positional averages and the meaning of arithmetic mean and the mathematical properties so the mathematical properties are very much useful in in studying other chapters so you can clearly go through the video understand the concept and study well those who are not subscribing sukhan economics so far kindly subscribe and click the bell button then only you will get the intimation whenever we are uploading a video thank you thank you friends